Hello! Welcome back to Riviera. This is Regdrin, and right next to me, maybe a little too close, is our typer It's still legal, damn it. And that seems like a very familiar kind of music. I'll go back to that later. Uh, how f Oh, you again. Uh, it's Hector. And he just says, Haha, <laughs> good luck, buddy, and then disappears. He is the worst boss. Let us sense his danger. Indeed, it is about time. Wait, what? Is that Letta actually showing concern for Ein's well-being? Don't get used to it. It does seem very unusual for him. Whatever he senses must really come close as anything can to scaring him. Don't talk about the past. Don't talk about the war. Hector showed up just to say, climb those stairs. Now the first time I saw this, I thought that was just Ursula talking, Ico style. Uh, no, she summoned a boss. And, judging from Hector's reaction, she probably is from Asgard. Yeah, has he really told you anything? He talks a lot about how important the mission is. And that's about it. This boss is actually, uh, fairly challenging. I had more trouble managing things with him than with the next two or three bosses. Of course, it's not like you can lose, but... Yeah, but there's another part. Keeping Ein from dying. Or getting knocked out. Whatever the video game version is. And part of the trick is knowing the timing on raising Ein's fire resistance. Because it's important to uh, keep the fire orb uh, at least a little bit intact, so you're limited to two uses. So you have to figure out exactly how long you can get away with uh, having him attack between uses of it. Other than that, go to town. I actually used it a bit early. Its initial attack is not too threatening. The other part of this boss that's a little bit of a headache is figuring out exactly when you can execution it to death. Because you can only do it once. Oh yeah, Raid Burner. Now this attack would be much less dangerous if uh, Leda let me switch formation, but he's not big into formation or tactics or teamwork. Also, uh, this boss is not resistant to fire. Yeah, despite the fact that all of its attacks are fire, and it's this big, fiery thing, uh, Leta deals damage just fine. You already did that. Oh, uh, I wasn't paying attention, was I? No, no. The thing is, uh, his resistance went up by 40, which means that it had run out. And I used it just in time. Actually, this attack does pretty much the same damage as its rage attack. Because it was balanced to hit only one person because you were not stupid. But then, Leto was running things, so never mind. I 
won't hold back. The third part of the challenge is keeping Ayn alive efficiently enough to have him contribute and make the battle take less time to get that wonderful S rank. And you'll see why S ranks are important. Yeah, normally you'd think, well, there's no more exploring the chapter after the boss, so why would I need more explore points? You don't need those. However, if you get an S rank against a boss, you get a special reward at the end. Now, since Agard's attacks charge up a whole bunch of your overdrive meter, you can pretty much spam double slash through most of it. Also, its rage and max attacks uh, delay its next turn by a really long time. So even though Ein's about to just fall over, it's no big deal. I'd say about 1300 is the right time to use the explode skill. Of course you can whiff with it. Yeah, that's the problem. You only do about 1300 if you get no misses at all. And Leda is actually not the most agile person. So... Really, his regeneration is the only thing he has going for him. Well, that and his overpowered uh, Lorelei skill. That's like a level 2 skill right there that you use for free. And that's how much damage Raid Burner does if you're not fire resistant. That's the problem with me using that fire orb too early. However, battle is about to be over soon. Yeah. It turned out not to be too costly. Down he goes. Judgment has been passed. All right. Oh, I learned a Naruto skill. Believe it. I get a one-use weapon. Most people will, of course, save it until they feel they would really need it and then end up throwing it away. But since I want to show off what they do, I'll try to uh, avoid that particular problem. So, blind violence didn't work. Ursula is using hacks. And she decides to abduct the less violent of the two for death. You can tell that she expects Ayn to die just from what she says here. Meanwhile... I don't have to do anything. You're a real hero, Hector. Now, I don't know exactly what the properties of this place are, but it's pretty clear that if Ayn was the sort of Groom Angel that one would expect from the likes of Leda and others, he would be just gone by now. Is it possible he's not a jerk? I guess he's what am I fighting for enough to survive. Now it seems kind of, uh, 
a bit of a stretch to say, oh, this guy isn't uh, dying already. Let's entrust the entire fate of Riviera to him. But as we mentioned before, Grim Angels are the strongest thing around, really. If you get one on your side, that's a, a big help, seriously. I just looked like kind of a wimp because of who he was next to. Okay, our first town. Yep, the first and only town. Which means is in that Riviera 2, Ayn will burn the whole place to the ground. Probably shouldn't have stuck Lorelei in his forehead. That's just bad juju all around. <laughs> We have characters! Color-coded. Color-coded by their primary element, by the way. I have a body? Oh my god, I have clothes too! Oh, that was specific. Unsolicited. Phew, sigh of relief. Okay, so... She didn't so much peek as probably stared. That's effectively saying, what is this planet Earth? Oh dear. That trope. Amnesia, one of the most abused plot devices in stories. The main difference in Riviera is that we actually know the details, all of them, uh, before he uh, gets amnesia. And everyone runs to their places as they realize the player is getting control. Mm -hmm. Okay. Relationship system. That heart means that she likes you more because you got her name right. Now, when I read some reviews of this game, they said that this game has dating sim elements, which will immediately trigger the screams of anyone who plays real dating sims because this game doesn't have, oh, things like personal stats and relationship stats and keeping track of the time of day and scheduling. Or a bad end uh, where uh, the uh, girl shoots you in the face. Yeah, we haven't met the uh, character who would do that yet. Mm-hmm. And it is exploring time. Surprisingly, the first time you go to town, there are some useful things you can get from it. And each place has a fairy that says, this is so-and-so's house. I, I want to recruit one of those like it could in sweep it in. <laughs> that was the best recruitable character ever. Oh, That's so uh, not a good sign. No. Fight with me? I like your spirit, little kid. I'll be merciful and knock you out with one punch. Versus small child. Now, a child stick doesn't sound like a really effective item, but it's actually surprisingly good. <laughs> it's a staff weapon that hits reasonably hard, and, well, we'll see what it does later. Yeah, you go to uh, town in between dungeons, you know, to stock up on iron rations, rope, maybe get a new lantern. Yeah. Speaking of which, let's see what I carried from chapter one. Not that. 
You threw the rock. Not the or Halkin, not that. The only thing we have is that old rusty sword. And if this is the first time you're playing and you didn't read FAQs, you might not even clean that sword up because you have to talk to the blacksmith a few times before he does this for you. No, don't give him the rusty sword. Well, oh. And he hammers the rust off of it, apparently. Does that work? I'm not sure that it does. It works now! One of the benefits of just having one town is that they can flesh out all of the characters more than most role-playing games where, except when it's Earthbound, each character gets maybe one or two lines. Yeah, but you still want to talk to everybody just cuz. Cuz the game guides say so. Oh, well, I have a whole bunch of questions. Oh, he's not telling me anything. Welcome to Corneria. And this is how we get the plot started. Advancement. It's actually fairly uh, annoying if you don't know how it's done ahead of time. First, you have to find out that Lena and Fia have run off. Second, you have to find someone who will tell you where the Elder's house is. This is uh, more difficult than it might sound, because a lot of the people around here don't trust you yet. Do they have any reason to? I'm a guy. Uh, I'm around here. Fortunately, Ritz is dumb enough to tell you. So you don't even have to switch locations to find out. Oh, Ritz says that his job is to dig up crystals, but unless you help him in a specific way, he never succeeds. Sounds like kind of a cushy job to me if you can keep it without getting any results. Well, this doesn't seem like the kind of place where you have to look work too hard to survive. I got a ribbon! True to RPG nature, it prevents status ailments, but it's still not worth using. Ever. Nope. Well, it has a skill attached to it, so you might as well get the stats, but that's it. Uh-oh. RPG rules say that the moon drop has to exist and you have to be the one that finds it. And it's gonna be pretty out of the way. Not out of the way exactly, but it is troublesome. I first read that as Grave of Repose, and I was thinking, well, wow, everyone here is pretty cheerful considering. Nope. No. She's pretty sharp. Whoa, whoa. Uh -huh. Hands to yourself, buddy. If you haven't triggered the uh, Find the Elder uh, exam yet, he says something even more creepy if you talk to him twice. Something about storing you in a nice, safe place. You know, you could have just said there are demons there. Also, King Graham is here! He apparently retired and just leaves the village. I, I guess he gave up that old hat of his. That spear looks kind of flimsy, by the way. The one that... Yeah, I see it. Yeah, it's all bent and 
Well, keep then... in mind uh, what uh, the uh, diviners are like. Okay, yeah. Weapon design in this game is kind of weird. I have to admit the Elder has a point, though. I mean, this village isn't too large, and the people around here aren't exactly adventurers. They might just not have the guys necessary to send an expedition like that. Plus, you know, devils. Yeah, yeah. This isn't something that you send, say, the farmer and the blacksmith to handle. Of course it's dangerous! We don't want to hurt you, but if you follow us, we might not have a choice! Oh, magic circle, magic guild... close enough. you have to do more walking around. Oh yeah, instant teleportation to a faraway place where there are friends, but who cares? Where there used to be friends, I should say. Mm. Whoa, whoa, they're, it's like they're talking like they're ready to die. Maybe they are. Seriously, you have no regrets? That's pretty morbid. Also, neither of the two women say anything about being able to fight when they're going. Not to the Elder, not to Ayn. Also, I like that at the start of the game, you join someone else's party. Item dropping. Oh yeah, yeah. Got rid of that elixir, cause, you know, those things aren't useful. Same for that potion, who needs healing? Meanwhile... Now that Ayn is gone, Hector has stopped even pretending to do this for charitable reasons. Letta, being Letta, does not care. And like any villain... Oh yeah, soul collecting. I wonder what Ayn would be saying about this if he had made it down to Riviera along with Leta. Hector would probably have to find some other way to get rid of him. Well, you know, I isn't too bright, so... Hmm. On the other hand, he is extremely idealistic compared to Leta and Hector, which is not saying much, I admit. Hmm. Coming up. The first chapter where you get to make decisions about what goes on. Where your uh, other characters will actually use the weapons you find. And where they are helpful and do not mock you overly. Unless, of course, you deserve it. Next time, Chapter 2.